Right, let's go ahead and get started. Is there anyone here who is new and would like to introduce themselves? Yeah, I'll introduce myself. My name is Ron Stoner. I work for Shapeshift. I have a lot of experience with building um, sentries and validators and doing chain upgrades, and I'm interested in participating in um, zones. So that's why I'm here, just to learn more. Uh, Mark actually invited me. Uh, I worked with him on a couple projects, so happy to be here. Welcome, nice. Ron. <laughs> I've not been on this type of calls. Uh, I'm, I'm Simon. I work with Ethan on Cosm Wasm. And, mm, uh, mm. and now that uh, IBC integration is uh, getting more and more real, um, I'm starting to dig into that. Simon, were you just um, on the Relayer call? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, cool. Good to see you again. If you, uh, Simon, if you, we talked through with the Agoric folks um, yesterday for about 30 minutes about like, you know, what the short and medium term integration options are. I think in the medium long term, uh, Cosm Wasm and Agoric's integrations with, with uh, IBC and the SDK like look the same um, and probably the short term options look pretty similar as well. So if uh, you want to chat about that, always want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, very related to this is something that I mentioned in the Relayer call is the integration testing framework that I just uh, put up for the Relayer is going to make it very easy to add support for folks like Agoric and Cosm Wasm and have them included in the Relayer integration tests. And that's a goal that I really want to have is like make sure that the Relayer supports these chains and we have integration tests for it and we will. Mm -hmm. Cool. And anyone else who would like to introduce themselves? Hi, this is Frank. Um, I'm not comp exactly new, but that's the first time I, I joined this call. I, I, I've used uh, Tendermint a long time ago, about two years plus. And uh, I'm interested in uh, seeing IBC coming to, to light to, to get it back into practical projects for us. So I'm joining mostly for information. Cool. Thanks for Thank joining. you. I'm welcome. Thanks. Anyone else? All right, um, I just have some quick administrative updates. If you missed the call two weeks ago, the demo works, the end-to-end -end IBC demo, handshakes, packet send, packet receive, token transfers is completely functional. You can test it out, go to the Relayer repository, and there you'll find instructions for building two chains, running them and running the Relayer locally to test everything. Um, now we are into full bore game of zones preparation mode. So I've linked on the agenda milestones in the SDK for game of zones readiness, um, which you can see there. There are currently eight open issues still remaining, and a bunch of them already have PRs outstanding. It's progressing along that front pretty rapidly. Um, and also, there is an open milestone for 1.0 specification compliance. So there will be some tasks that. Uh, we implement after Game of Zones, or at least we can start Game of Zones before we finish the um, little final bits, but we'll finish the final bits before 1.0 release. And 1.0 release will hopefully mark the integration of IBC into the Cosmos Hub, subject to a governance vote, of course. There's also a linked milestone on the spec, which describes uh, the remaining spec issues, um, which are mostly, at this point, decoupled from implementation tasks. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that uh, just like I'm sure there's going to be questions about, you know, um, you know, given that we are going to do Game of Zones while landing still some substantial um, features before the hub main at launch. I think of Game of Zones mostly as serving a purpose of familiarizing um, all of the different entities in the ecosystem that have to sort of learn new abstractions, whether it's validators, relayers, application developers, etc everybody getting users becoming more familiar with the abstractions that IBC provides and less about um, it as a QA mechanism for the software. I'm fairly confident in all of our QA mechanisms um, and I don't think Game of Zones is a QA system. Yeah, and to follow up on that, which I agree with, um, the changes that are marked post Game of Zones pre 1.0 are not uh, not really changes that will affect most IBC users. The API is set, the handshake system is set, the interface uh, with which applications can utilize IBC is set. These here are just 
like additional clients for loopback, an additional timeout option, some changes in the internal merger proof formats to support other state machines more easily. Nothing really fundamental to the protocol. All the fundamental stuff is done or will be done prior to getting this out. Cool. That's all from my end. Any questions about those milestones? Uh, yeah, in, ter in terms of functionality, this game of zone uh, that uh, you're, you're launching, wh what kind of range of functionality compared to the, the ultimate um, end, end goal for IBC uh, in terms of coverage of uh, features? Um, pretty much everything. I mean, the, the after game of zones will come support for, you know, different sorts of proof formats, but that's mostly internal using the version of IBC that already exists and is implemented in the SDK and works in the end-to-end -end demo. You can already send any sort of packet you want. You can run, you, know, uh, you can connect to many chains at the same time. You can send tokens, uh, manual multi-hop, uh, not automatic multi-hop, a manual multi-hop between chains. All of that already works. Cool. We'll work in game zones. Thank you. Other questions? Cool. Do you want to talk about the Relayer integration test framework, Jack? You mentioned that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, I've been thinking for a while about how to integration test the Relayer and basically to test most of this stuff, I would have had to mock out the entire Gaia API. Um, so in lieu of doing that, I created a Docker container for Gaia uh, with a script as an entry point that takes as an argument the chain ID um, and an address to put into Genesis, and then built an integration framework where um, I spin up in of those, create an IBC network between them, and start transferring chains and uh, start transferring data around the chains. Now, um, with that as the API, i.e., chain ID and address for Genesis. Um, I think we should be able to support arbitrary chains as long as you can shove it into a Docker container that starts with just those two arguments. Um, so I'm happy to work with any projects that want to support IBC. Um, if you can give me a Docker container that exposes similar functionality, then we can start hooking that up in the Relayer integration tests and ensuring that the Relayer supports that uh, as a course of business. So um, happy to work with folks on that. And I think that this is a nice integration point to ensure consistency throughout the ecosystem. Cool. Just open issues on the Relayer, please. Thank you. Thank you, good to know. Oh yeah. Any other agenda items that people would like to bring up or general questions for something? So uh, this is Mark. Uh, question, do we have, or are we going to have a um, Cosmos SDK release soon that we can start to integrate towards? Um, <laughs> go ahead, Jack. I was going to say, uh, Mark, I don't think we're going to add the IBC alpha branch to a release until after Game of Zones. So okay. if you would like to integrate, the features that are substantially going to be in 039 are on the IBC alpha branch. So uh, bringing your code up to that branch will include a bunch of proto changes. Um, also very relevant for you all, um, all state marshalling and unmarshalling is now proto, which really should significantly help performance, which I know matters for you guys. Um, so a lot of other knock on changes that are going to be beneficial in that IBC alpha branch. Um, I would encourage you to start integrating there. And then once we release IBC, you'll be substantially at the release version. So if you're using protobuf now, is that gonna break the AminoJS integration that we have? No, it will not. The AminoJS, uh, the protobuf migration that we've done so far is only for state marshalling and unmarshalling, i.e. when the state machine um, opens the database at the beginning of a block, unmarshals everything and builds the state. Um, that all happens in protobuf. It's about a thousand times faster than the amino implementation. So uh, 
blocks get created faster, transactions move through the system much faster. Um, that in conjunction with uh, some of the other IAVL changes um, should significantly increase throughput for this release. Well, so what I was talking about more is our API server does its own marshalling. So if we, I mean, we integrated with the Amino JS stuff to do we that. We didn't touch any of the client side marshalling yet. Yeah, there's a big PR working through on that. Um, okay. So, I mean, the, the client side stuff? Yeah, order magnitude, just so. Um, I think, uh, didn't it go ready for review, like, this week? Um, I think I saw that go through. So, I don't know, I'd have to look at the issues. But there's a... There's an open pull request for it. Um, on the uh, integration testing thing, so there's um, integration testing of Relayer, and then there's four people building chains. Hi. <laughs> hey, Alessio, thanks for oh, such Alessio in. joining. <laughs> How are you? You're good? I don't want to be stuck. We're this, in so. the middle of this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me finish my question. Um, uh, so for integration testing of chains that would like to incorporate, uh, you know, that, that, that would like to do integration testing of the relayer against those separate chains rather than against Gaia, or rather Gaia on one side and, 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 and or for example, our zone on the other side. Um, are, do you have any uh, thoughts about how, how to provision that or how to support that? Uh, yeah, absolutely, Dean. Uh, so basically the unit of testing in this integration test framework is a Docker container. So uh, right now you're just passing in strings as a chain ID and it's creating everything for you. If you want to pass in string in a Docker container type and then it would have it create everything for you, that's a very easy change in what I anticipate making. Mm -hmm. So basically what we would say in the integration test is spin up an Agoric container, spin up a Gaia container, let's relay stuff between them. Got it. And Got we it. would write the test that way. Should be very easy. And we could also write Agoric to Agoric relayer integration tests as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And uh, I, I can, happy to work with folks on uh, what that looks like. But basically I have a script um, in this PR for Gaia. that spins up a Gaia, a single node Gaia chain, and it takes as an argument the chain ID, so it gives it a special chain ID, and um, an address to put into Genesis so that the relayer can have some funds. And here I will show you what that looks like here. New file. Oh no, that's the Docker file. This is the I'm just going to drop it in the chat here. Um, and it is pretty basic, so uh, should be helpful. Also, one thing to note, if you're going to submit, I'm like happy to give people guidelines for this, but if you're going to submit a Docker container for this, um, setting the block production speed um, faster than normal will help these tests run more expeditiously. Did that answer your question, Dean? Yes, thank you. Cool. Any other topics for discussion? Questions? I do. I'm really curious to see like what kinds of challenges, problems, missing documentation, et cetera, that trying to incorporate an upgrade of like Your audio is really cutting out. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, now I can hear you. What I was going to say is, I think it's going to be really interesting to see like what kinds of challenges um, upgrading from uh, the like O dot three an O dot three eight application to the IBC Alpha branch, um, where people 
are feel like there's not enough documentation, et cetera, about how to transition. Um, I think the internal protobuf thing sounds like the biggest service area plus IBC, um, but uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I do so, think that the internal protobuf piece is a big piece of it. But as Mark was saying, I also think that folks with existing JavaScript integrations, that, that's a big piece as well. Um, and we did the conversion from, you know, master to IBC alpha. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and so I can ask uh, Michael to send any, you know, thoughts or issues or kinds of things he ran into that, that, that might have made it difficult. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but it was, you know, it, it, it was spread over a week's time kind of thing to do the conversion. So it was, yep. it, um, the other thing that, so I've, I have another minor topic. Uh, Zucky mentioned earlier, uh, the, the dynamic IBC stuff. We'll have a, you know, high level description of what we mean by that in a blog post going out probably Monday. Um, so, so just for people that are interested to look for that and, uh, and ideas to have challenges around that in the upcoming virtual hackathon. So. Yeah. I mean, Valhalla will be when we have Cosmwasm and Agoric speaking DIBC together. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Soon. Very soon. Yep. 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 Wait, that means Valhalla is soon. I'm not sure I, <laughs> I'm not sure I wanted to go to Valhalla know, just man. yet. The world's not going well. We don't, might not have a lot of time. That's right. <laughs> We're all racing Ragnarok here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. As long as we're all still working on magic internet money, I feel like the world isn't going that badly. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, all right. Uh, I've got a question concerning the interchain hackathon on Gitcoin. Uh, it's getting close to the start, and uh, uh, there is very little info on it. Uh, I, I think there are uh, a lot of people here who uh, know a little more. Yeah, unfortunately, I can provide very little information on that because I'm not managing it. So, uh, the person to contact is Peter Heyman at AIE, probably. Maybe you I know. So we move the time frame of it because in order to better be able to incorporate IBC and dynamic IBC into various, into various uh, dynamic IBC is just IBC up into a, a, a platform that can uh, deploy new protocols after the, the chain is deployed. Um, and so the, the plan start date, and also, you know, everyone has been slowed down, Gitcoin included, in terms of getting the site ready. So the plan start date is April 20th through May 11th. Um, the prizes are, are uh, uh, you know, getting nailed down, but they'll be announced soon. Um, and and the, the, the site will start getting updated. Um, there is a page on Gitcoin, but it doesn't have very much content. Um, and so all of that will, will come out soon. But fundamentally, April, April, uh, April 20th through, through May 11th. Um, and there will be prizes for, um, it'll be Agoric, or sorry, Cosmos, obviously, Agoric, and probably Band Protocol, which is an Oracle protocol on, on Cosmos. And, um, uh, and there will be some prizes for, for specific you know, application interoperability between these various platforms, including VM platforms. Um, you know, obviously Agoric is one of them, but I, you know, I will take off that hat and gladly uh, um, uh, help reward a, 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 a Cosmwasm thing that's, that's interoperating as well. So, so it's all about getting these, these things to, systems to interoperate. Okay, cool, thank you. Did I miss anything on there? Anyone who knows? No, I guess not. <laughs> All right. Anything else anyone would like to bring up for discussion? Questions? Excellent. Oh, I will say, I will add one other thing. Uh, uh, Adriana contacted me where I think yesterday or the day before was there, uh, was today at Cosmos' uh, uh, first anniversary of them doing the daily, or doing the daily news roll up. So, 
So um, I thought, you know, I really like that. And so I thought I would just mention it here for everyone to some, at some point say thank you to Adriana and Calpatex for that. And I know lots of people do lots of things, but that particular one happened to go out yesterday. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. The, um, so one thing maybe we could talk about is um, the like connection topology crawler uh, idea and the need for that at some point. Um, does anybody want to talk about that and like what we have right now, which is like the like ability to like connect to a chain and list the channels on it, um, but something that could actually like hop from chain to chain, uh, listing channels on it uh, and like sort of map out all the connections and probably eventually map out like how many tokens have been transferred over that connection and stuff like that is a, is a thing that we, that is going to be needed. And I don't know who's going to develop it, but uh, it's, so, it's definitely a, a cool thing for someone. So um, that with the hackathon coming up, there are two, two, two or three uh, things we could do around projects like that, that are tied to the hackathon. One is of course, just is, you know, hope someone mention it around and hope someone does it. Um, the second is um, uh, actually, you know, try and propose a project, whatever, but the third is actually get a, or sorry, a, such that that fits under one of the prizes. The third might actually be to get a specific prize for that particular utility kind of function. Is this, a, is this in the bucket that, 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 that uh, it might be worth advocating a specific prize for that? Um, I, um, open to that question. I'm open to giving feedback to AIB about whether or not it would be it. Um, I mostly just wanted to talk about um, like people's ideas for this um, uh, and stuff like that. Like, um, like one thing that I imagine would be sort of uh, uh, sort of like an interesting um, thing for someone to build um, is something more like a, a like because you're, you're going to need two things with the crawler. One is you're going to need the ability to have full nodes on multiple zones that you can query. And then you're also going to need like a lookup table of what full node to query for what zone based on like the topologies that you see. And then some way of like telling someone if you're like, oh, I, there's a connection, but I don't know of a full node for that other side of that chain ID. Yeah, Zachy, I, I was thinking on the relayer, the relayer would do a lot of this and it would automatically populate all paths between configured chains um, for one piece. But as far as like the data about existing transactions and stuff, the chain abstraction within the relayer library um, could easily be fashioned into something that's listening for different transaction events and persisting them into a database. Um, that would be an excellent hackathon project and something that I'd be happy to advise on. Also, the uh, visualizer that Vasily showed at the beginning of the call uh, does some of this and is pretty cool, I might add. No, wait, I didn't see this. It's in the chat. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> Up at the top. And also, Meher had a question. Go ahead. But your audio is completely. Um, he wanted to uh, explain like I'm five for dynamic IBC. Ah, oh. explain like I'm five. Do you want to take this, Dean? Um, sure. Yes. So and and I will send you the blog post, which is which is attempting to explain like I'm five. I now understand the the the. Uh, um, so um, the observation came from, you know, when we were talking about uh, uh, new chains popping up and IBC is one of the, the one of the advantages for, for innovation. The problem is if I come up with a new application protocol, right, there's the tau layer and there's the app layer, right? If I come up with a new application protocol, the architecture of the Cosmos hub, the, the Cosmos SDK current implementation, for example, that started this, um, is that you'll send packets of a of a type of packet that the Go code does not understand, and so it will choke. And what will happen is it will fail to parse and it'll reject the transaction because it doesn't understand that. Right. So so dynamic IBC was primarily the realization that we needed to 
changed so that the payload for the app protocol was treated as data by all the plumbing because that way it's agnostic to new app protocols coming in after any particular platform is deployed, right? And then at the level of the app protocol, you can, you can decide what to do with that packet, including parse it under different various, you know, regimes, depending on what your endpoint is expecting. And so dynamic IBC was, was inspired by four platforms like Agora, where you can deploy new code after Started, you know, permissionlessly and so forth, I can deploy new code to parse a new application protocol of a new chain and provide them a counterparty immediately without requiring chain governance upgrade or that sort of thing. And that's all. So it's, so it's a fairly simple idea, but it's an important enough idea that, 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 that sort of, you know, deserves to be first class because it's crucial for enabling, you know, rapid innovation and standing up of new zones with new app protocols. And that's something that we anticipate having for Game of Sounds. Yeah. So does that yeah, make sense? Thanks to the work that, um, so right now in, um, in, in uh, uh, the current implementation on the IPC Alpha branch, like routing is effectively static and declared in compile time. But when you're, uh, thanks to the work that Aditya and Bez have done on a dynamic capability keeper inside of the SDK, um, applications like uh, Cosm like com like modules like Cosmosm and modules like Agora will be able to actually dynamically re request that like this essentially smart contract now owns this port and any uh, uh, packets that come in on this port just get routed to it and it all gets handled and eaten and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's like a parsing piece of this which we're getting right. There's a dynamic capabilities piece of this. Um, and then there's the integration with smart contract engines. And when all three of those things finally come together, we get a very powerful system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, very excited about that. Um, can, do you hear me well now? Yes. Okay. Can we have, can I have an example of like some kind of example where sure. some developer is looking to build application ABC and today they're going to be stuck here and this is how dynamically we, IVC. Uh, sure. So, so let's say uh, at the time when I first came up with this, we, we were just talking to foam and we had just done the Berlin, uh, 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 you know, meetup. Um, and so, uh, um, foam has proof of location and they have these proofs that are a different format than fungible token transfer or non fungible token transfer. Um, if they were to, you know, I, you know, if we persuade them to get that onto IBC so they can use IBC to transfer their proof of location, they would transfer it to the Cosmos hub to transfer it to you and the Cosmos hub would reject the transaction because it was unfamiliar packet type. And the Cosmos hub doesn't have a way of deploy. And this is not, not a, an indictment of Cosmos hub by any, any, any means. And it's, it's an entirely reasonable thing for the purpo its purpose, but, but the Cosmos hub doesn't have any way to upload new code to parse that proof of location. And it would require the Cosmos Hub vote to upgrade to do that. On and you know again, I'll use the Agora platform, but this is going to be true of a Cosmwasm or any other smart contract platform. They could deploy their network. They could deploy a contract on 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 the Agora platform that will be the endpoint of their proof of location notices and will parse their new app packet from IBC that they specify in their format with no coordination from anyone. And now suddenly the Agoric platform has, you know, JavaScript objects that represent a proof of location that can now be used in an application so that someone could, you know, allow concert ticket resale only within a mile of the concert venue or whatever the heck it is, right? And so, and so, the, and, and the important thing there is they can do that permissionlessly without requiring a chain governance vote or without requiring an upgrade of the chain itself because the uploaded code is able to parse this previously unknown packet type. Does that help? I don't like, so if the interaction is between the foam chain and Agoric, well, I don't I'd, between the foam I'd, chain and someone who wants to use it on Agoric or wants to use it on Ethermint or wants to use it on whatever. <clears throat> Isn't Mayor, it just the general capability of a smart contract chain? So, Mayor, um, just to sort of maybe make this a bit more clear, 
if I'm developing a new protocol where I want to send non-fungible tokens, for example, Cosmos Hub doesn't have that protocol. And in order to upgrade to support that protocol would potentially take an on-chain governance vote. Dynamic IBC allows for quick testing and deployment of new application level protocols on top of IBC. So one thing I was, I, I try and explain is that if you, so in a generic smart contract chain, hypothetically, you could implement the entire IBC protocol as a series of smart contracts. Um, and that's possible. But what we're trying to do is for chains that are using, that are simultaneously using the Cosmos SDK and a, an internal like smart contract scripting capability, we don't want the smart contract to have to have So this allows Sorry, all just, up. just got hard. It sounds like you're picking up your phone and, and covering the microphone. Oh, okay. Sorry. There we go. Better? Yes. Okay. I was holding it wrong. <laughs> um, so what I was saying was in the, in the, in the, what I was saying was this allows taking advantage of all of the IBC machinery that exists inside of the Cosmos SDK for handling packets, for routing them, for validating proofs, all of that stuff. And all you have to do then is handle in the smart contract parsing of the data packet and whatever application logic that you have to implement on, on top of that, um, which is a much, which is a very small surface area and allows you to basically uh, leverage all of the existing IBC machinery in the Cosmos SDK, but get like where the where dynamic you know where di where dynamic code is actually yielding the largest benefit. Um, get that benefit. So I just sent you a draft of our blog post, but it's got a few more changes to go in, but 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 it's pretty close. <clears throat> so I think I think it's starting to make sense. So is it correct that Something like dynamical ABC, IBC is needed because in this, in this world, in this Cosmos world, there's Cosmos SDK and, and then there are like smart contract solutions like Cosmosm and Agoric coming on top. So uh, you need some way to sort of leverage the strengths of both. So the strength of the Cosmos SDK is all of this IBC port connection, a good implementation that that, that a team the is power. building. And yeah. so if I'm building a Cosmos SDK chain, I can just follow along on the IBC work that's being done on Cosmos SDK. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and then in, on my chain, there's also a smart contract system. So because there are these two ways of building chain logic, it's to make them Sort of interoperate and take the best of both. Yes, right. Basically, it's adding the dynamism of smart contract things, leveraging the transport authentication layer of of of, of IBC Cosmos. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phones. <laughs> All right. What are people excited about building? That's on people's agenda for next week. My whole platform. <laughs> <laughs> we are exploring uh, an uh, IDI for interchange. Uh, so for us, we can interchange. So, so like uh, blockchain uh, uh, data data lake, uh, so you can see what are uh, connections, transactions, and so on. Recovering your mic again. That would be cool. Looking forward to that facility. Uh. I know Jorge is also working on uh, some client side stuff for IBC as well. Uh, the persistence team obviously working heavily on IBC and very interested in that protocol. Um, 
Mark uh, at Shapeshift, uh, the microtick chain basically requires IBC to work. And um, <clears throat> what it would be doing is likely uh, emitting events during in block uh, that allow to an unordered channel that allow users to transfer authenticated data over to their chain for use in other smart contracts. And this authenticated data would be price data emitted by the Oracle. Um, let's see. Yeah, those are the folks on this call I know working on stuff. And uh, Frank, uh, are you working on any IBC specific uh, stuff right now? Uh, no, not right now, but uh, we, we've done something uh, about two years ago. It would be, I mean, basically I'm, I'm looking to not use any more wallet providers in the, in the crypto world, uh, in essence to do payment versus payment, or let's say things that uh, can be done with zero X uh, on the ERC20 tokens. But I would love to see the possibility to do that in, between chains that have nothing to do with one another. So that's my ultimate goal, including as well some uh, on-ramp uh, fiat representation like stable coins or other kind of uh, representations. So I, I don't want to uh, let's say be, be showing any impatience or anything like that, but I, I want to be basically anticipating the right moment when you guys will say, hey, yeah, I think you can, you can start to develop something now and, and I'll, be, I'll be ready in the starting block. Yeah, I mean, as far as sort of a DEX that aggregates demand from a number of different zones and, and takes in that information over IBC, um, you could definitely start developing something like that now and have it ready in six months to a year, I would imagine. Um, the, and at that point, IBC would probably be ready. The other sort of momentous thing that happened today in, in the history of Cosmos is uh, keep open source their multi-party ECDSA um, code. Uh, for the first time and that would make it much easier to build like a zone that is like a DEX or something that is like holding Bitcoin. Yes. Cool. I, I think. Hmm. From, okay. um, oh, I'm also, I'm very interested in the security and the gamification with Game of Zones, specifically some of the things you guys mentioned with the priority attacks with proposers, double spending and just kind of how fragile the ecosystem is where we can help secure that. So I'm definitely going to be hitting that pretty hard when, uh, when the game starts up. That would nice. be great. That's exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is, you know, what is the dynamic, what is the topology of IVC start to look like when you know that there are zones out there that are trying to forge coins and um, uh, forge paths. Cause that's, that's always been the sort of, open question of, about IBC um, versus you know, sharding, basically. Because, um, you know, IBC has this, like, sort of uh, weaker expectation about um, state machine consistency and, um, you know, what kinds of, of attacks might be possible. Um, and uh, so the question has been, like, where, where do these attacks get detected, et cetera? And I think there's a lot of interest, opportunity to build stuff like that, both on the client side and in the state machine. Um, like ideas like, oh, my zone will reject tokens with a path length greater than X or, um, you know, will like whitelist paths that it thinks are safe. Um, that kind of stuff um, might be, an, you know, the kinds of defenses that might become interesting. Chris, some of those features might rely on the channel callbacks, correct? Um, it, certainly, if you want to control what can happen during the handshake or reject incoming channels, you will need the callback set up. The callbacks have nothing to do with packets, but they just No, allow. you would need to, yeah. Yeah, I think this is mostly on the packet level. Um, it would be interesting to think of whether or not you would also want to reject channels. Or kind of, you could jail tokens in some way that like you, you, you deem suspicious uh, on your blockchain. Couldn't you just fail transfers? Yeah, 
but you could also like accept them and be like, okay, we're gonna like hold them and not let you transfer them in certain ways until, you know, we feel like until some sort of governance action or et cetera happens. Yep, all of these things are possible. That's the kind of stuff that I think would be really exciting to see in sort of the latter, latter phases of Game of Zones. I would like to see uh, attacks on the Tendermint like client security model. These are very tricky to perform, but there are some kinds of um, faults um, in Tendermint that are not currently handled by our fork accountability system. I would really like to see some of them realized. Oh, yes, that would be very cool. Um, a lot of, you know, this actually gets to a certain like point, which is like, you know, a lot of a lot of people have asked, like, what is slashing for, really? Um, in a world where you're BFT, like, you're slashing people, you're not really, um, you know, as long as they didn't exceed the fault tolerance threshold, they didn't actually really hurt the network. Um, what's what's the point of all of this? It's actually sort of all of this becomes way more exciting if you have um, in an in a world where where there are many light clients and on chain light clients, uh, because you might want to fork a light client without forking your chain itself. Um, and building attacks that do that will be very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Adriana. Dean mentioned that it was a one year anniversary of today in Cosmos. So congratulations. Thank you for running that. I just realized that it's been one year. Adriana, are you there? Maybe not. Yes, I am. Hi. Hello. Hi, Chris. Did you hear what Chris just said? I was just uh, coming into the room, went to the kitchen, so uh, I missed that. Could you please repeat, Chris? Oh, gotcha. Uh, I said congratulations on one year of today in Cosmos. Oh, thank you. It's, yeah, the, next month, it's one year of today in Cosmos, and I'm I cannot believe a year has passed since uh, uh, we first started doing that. So yeah, very grateful to um, be able to contribute. Cool. Does anyone have any further agenda items, discussion topics? Um, I just wanted to mention like uh, the issue with the account prefixes uh, for transfers. If uh, I know this may be a bit tricky, but if this is going to be considered before Game of Zones. Yeah, Jorge, that's one we're going to resolve before Game of Zones, for sure. Okay. Just for folks who don't know, um, that's an issue with handling different account prefixes in the chain code itself. Um, and I think we're going to figure out a way to do that. I believe Alessio said he was working on that. I think Alessio was just working on the client side of that, not the. Sorry, a second. Can you can you say again, please? I was uh, reading. Yeah, this. Alessio, uh, we were talking about uh, wallet prefixes, and there's an issue yes. where during transaction okay. execution, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there is an issue. The wallet the prefix is not properly parsed right and it causes transaction failure so this is yes. down in the transfer module during yep. transaction execution okay okay i can explain can you hear me yep. hello can you hear me okay so yes. the problem with the prefixes uh the the root of this evil lies within the types package of the sdk prefixes are stored in a structure called config, which then is referred to across the code base uh, by a singleton. So uh, I'm now trying to remove the use of the singleton uh, everywhere by not using the singleton <laughs> fundamentally. So the, the, the first uh, surface I'm attacking is the key ring. So the key store. So that at least 
uh, via some config, some, I don't know, some flags. I'm experimenting. I'm trying to fix things uh, as I go because it's been demonstrated that, that removing the use of the singleton across the code base would be an epic task and it would change the developer experience uh, quite drastically. So, um, so yes, there is, there is a problem, especially with the key representation. For instance, I just opened up a PR, which changes at least the internal representation of how keys are indexed in the key ring. Um, so when we store a key ring in the key store, in order for the key store to be able to fetch the keys by both name, so alias, uh, reef key reference or whatever, and address, we store it twice. One by name and one by address. Now, address is a string, a string representation, uh, which is returned by the string method of the account of the address type. The string methods of the address types uh, comply with the Golang uh, standard format package for uh, FN, uh, no, sorry, stringer interface. And fundamentally, these methods, all of them, depend on the singleton in order to return a back 32 prefix address. So rather than storing the keys in the key ring by this inter, uh, representation, which depends on the singleton, I'm storing now the keys, the addresses, by the hexadecimal representation, which is, should be chain agnostic. That's the first step. So I, I'm now tackling the key ring in order to at least make the library reusable without necessarily depend on the config singleton. Um, as I said, I'm doing some experimentations. I'm working on like at least five things at once. So it will take me some time, but we get in there step by step. Does that answer your question? Um. Yeah, I think that there is an early issue because the all the Marshall JSON for the address type uh, mm -hmm. also use this singleton. So every time you Marshall to JSON, yes, it will use the singleton, and this is yes. also used for the sign bytes. So yes, yes, uh, that is true. Uh, that is true. But when we sign a transaction, uh, we don't use um, okay, the sign of a transaction fundamentally is, is assigning a string of bytes. So if you look into the implementation of, the, of, the, of any key-based implementation uh, sign method, you see just the, the name of the key and the string, you know, the byte slides. So at least I'm trying to tackle the key ring. When it comes to signing a transaction, yes, that depends on the object, on the, on the structure, you can find uh, under X auth, I think, which is now used to be called the TX builder, is now TX factory or factory, I can't recall exactly. And uh, yes, um, that depends on, that depends, I think that depends on the JSON representation of the address. Yes, that's correct. The, the problem, the problem, um, Either we address it right away, um, but we break lots of things, um, or we try to tackle step by step all these small issues that, that we identify as we go. Yeah, in, in Jorge, uh, to answer your uh, question. Just the last thing, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to hear, you know, I welcome any advice or any, uh, suggestions. I'm, be I'm very, I'm very happy to hear uh, if somebody got some idea. Thank you. Jorge, to answer your question, I, I think that the specific issue that we're running into will be solvable with a one-off fix. Um, obviously, this sort of change to store key rings in the key base as chain agnostic and then be able to dynamically add the prefix to them as we use them. Um, will be the overall solve to this problem. Um, but for now, um, we will have a fix for that prior to game results. Okay, thanks.
the ability to transfer between different key prefix addresses is like kind of table stakes for IBC. So um, this is one we need to get fixed. Yep. Thanks for the update there, unless you have any, Jack. We will prioritize that for you. So much technical depth like there. Thank you. Yeah, well, we're clearing through the technical debt. Debugging the end-to-end -end IBC demo involved finding and fixing several bugs in the SDK that had nothing to do with IBC. So that was... Um, when we did this global IBC, good. like, BEC32 Bet, Bet state, when we did the global state originally, we were like, it was like a conscious look at this technical debt. Well, as we have created, we will someday have to deal with. That day is today. Yes, we also found some non-trivial things with the DIBC stuff. Just not, you know, just just uh, things you discover that you expect and, and, and need to be fixed along the way. Well, in the SDK, not in the spec. The spec was always correct. That's right. That's right. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, Thank you I all. I think we'll just go ahead and call it then. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Stay safe wherever you are and see you again in two weeks. Ciao. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Ciao. Bye. Later.